you went out in the desert and you were able to summon rain. Yes. How are you able to do that? We all are able to do that when you are open <laughs> to, <laughs> to many things. When you summon something, it's not because you think that that something is outside of you. Mm -hmm. It's because you become it. You become the rain. Ladies and gentlemen, he is back for part two. I don't have any, I don't have many guests on the second time, so I'm honored to be here with you, man. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. What you been up to since we last spoke six months ago? Anything interesting? <laughs> so many things. <laughs> Where to begin? Yeah. I, I've been everywhere. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. love travel. You went to Egypt. Yeah, I went to Egypt, to, uh, to Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Greece, yeah. Canary Islands, North Pole. Wow. And <laughs> so are so these many all, places. Are these all spiritual journeys or just for um, fun? I'm like in a kind of... Uh, so sometimes it's because I organize some trips there, yeah. but uh, sometimes because of a conference, but mainly because I'm following clues, mm. trying to, to make a map of something, of project that I am trying to, to build up. Wow. And um, every country and every part of the planet has a clue for me to put together. So yeah. when you say clue, is that sort of a message from the universe you're seeing that inclines you to go there? Yeah, you, you know, when, when you say, you, uh, when sometimes people say, oh, this is like a deja vu, or um, I, just, I just realized about something, or this must be a sign, you right. know, these kind of things. We are not used to pay attention to that. Some people get very crazy by following them. Mm -hmm. Some others don't pay attention. So I'm using that as a as a work. Interesting. <laughs> like uh, the patterns that are in the world, yeah. they're all always there for people to pay attention to them. So. So what's your interpretation on deja vu? Is that a past life memory sort of resurfacing? Subconscious is picking up on it. What exactly is deja vu? Like it could be many times. The the word deja vu, uh, deja, deja vu uh, in French is. I, ha I already seen it. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Yeah. Um, and it's mainly it's basically your brain uh, interpreting codes of things that you have already seen many times, mm -hmm. and uh, it put them all in the same package, like saying this kind of is the same. So it's a good way to to understand um, how many times have you lived something or. How many times have you been in the same circle? Mm. So um, when you say it's a deja vu, it's not maybe a spiritual being telling you uh, this is this is a sign, but it's your own brain telling you this is something that has happened many times to you and you are not paying attention. So we put it in a in a library right. or, or in a folder in your brain that says whenever it happens again, pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is that library? Is that the Akashic Records? It's the Akashic Records, of course, uh, because it's everywhere, mm -hmm. but uh, we can also relate it to our nervous system. Yeah. So n our nervous system works like the Akashic. So. And the Akashic Records, does everyone have access to that? Everyone. And that's we, just we a collection of all the memories, right? Yes, yes, is is in a quantum level. So right. it's everywhere, all the time. And you, we, we mostly access that when we dream. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when we interpret the dreams, it's very complicated to understand it. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's everywhere. The, the information is, I, I usually call it like a public library. Yeah, and people don't even realize. But you can yeah. learn a lot in your dreams. There's a lot of messages. You messaging. can learn a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I actually keep a dream journal every night because there's so many lessons, hidden meanings, um, stuff that you wouldn't pick up while you're not dreaming. Yeah, and that's that's the level of the subconscious. And uh, the subconscious is basically building everything that we know. Like, we don't pay attention to that because we got used to it. Mm -hmm. But um, every color that I see around, um, the texture of the air, temperature, um, the sight of, of a person. So anything that is around is controlled by the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Like, the first time that we saw the color black in our existence, mm -hmm. uh, what registry as a memory related to what was happening when we saw that color black, for example. Mm. So every time that we see that color tells us something. Yeah. And um, but we st we stop paying attention to it. So because it's so much data that yeah. you cannot pay attention to it. Like your brain says, okay, I will focus just on this. 
Yeah. Because I cannot pay attention to every. Shout out to today's sponsor, Articulate. I know all of you want to hit revenue targets, get that new launch done, scale your business. Well, making sure your team knows what to do and how to do it, well, that's a huge part of that. I'm sure you all do different kinds of training. I'm sure you've probably used tools like PowerPoint, Zoom, etc. And I bet you probably get super bored when someone at your company is explaining you how to use these tools. That's why I really love this tool, Articulate 360. It makes it easy to whip together interactive, really beautiful learning that really engages people and gets info across. You're no longer falling asleep during presentation. You can create short form, micro learning, super interactive courses, and really whatever you need. With our attention spans these days dropping, something like this is super valuable. With a couple of clicks, you can send it out and check on your progress. The team can also check back in on the training anytime they want in a super simple portal. Literally everyone I know uses Articulate, over 120,000 companies in all 100 of the Fortune 500. Check it out today at articulate.com slash 360 to start a free trial. Everything. So all the, the other senses take care of that information. So when you dream, when you go to sleep, your brain starts to organize all that information that you received and you didn't pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So it all comes back in a package of data that is in the subconscious, right. which is where most of the information of the Kashik is all the time. Interesting. So that's why we don't usually pay attention. And the way you can access that is when you uh, dream or allow yourself to dream awaken. Yeah. When you imagine, when you think like a child, um, you start to see the patterns. Yeah. yeah, daydreaming. I've been studying dreaming. There's some people with the abilities to enter other people's dreams. Have you seen that before? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what does that... Why do some people have that ability, you think? Why do they have it? Maybe they have a, a very open subconscious because, because in the subconscious, there is no division. Mm. There's no other people. It's all the same network of information. Mm -hmm. It's all the same code. So if you say a person, you enter the package of humanity. So humanity is like, a, I don't know, it's, it's like, saying, um, like saying we all have an app like Instagram in our phone, uh, our devices are different, but the app has the same code. Yeah. Even if we charge different information, different pictures or, or whatever, mm -hmm. the code on the back is the same. So uh, when you go to the subconscious, it's like that. It's mm -hmm. like you enter the code of that. So if you know how to handle the code, you become a hacker. Interesting. <laughs> so it's like a universal code that if you understand it, you can do certain things. Mm hmm. And I will say, I heard a crazy story about you. I won't name drop the person, Okay. but he told me you were in Las Vegas once, you went out in the desert and you were able to summon rain. Yes. How are you able to do that? We all are able to do that when you are open <laughs> to, <laughs> to many things. Yeah. Uh, it's just that our culture closes so much that we barely uh, understand the power that we have. And when you summon something, it's not because you think that that something is outside of you. Mm -hmm. It's because you become it. You become the rain. You become the storm. Mm. And uh, for the last gathering that we did, um, I was invited here in, in Las Vegas. Um, I don't. I don't. I cannot stand much the city here. So yep. I run to the nature. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the first thing I did was to go to. Uh, to the Gay Canyon, yeah, and I was asking there, why am I here? So I allow myself to become to become the nature, to become everything. Mm -hmm. And as I was activating that with my own self, not being me, but in another, uh, like in a dream realm, but being awakened, mm -hmm. um, uh, suddenly the storm started to appear and the static started to be very high. So basically I grabbed that thing and pull it to Las Vegas. Wow. Uh, when I came here in order to, to wash it for the cleansing of the energy for the gathering. It's cool. Because they told me. Yeah. To. And, um, and it rained a lot. It doesn't rain that much here. So the fact that you were able to summon it and become it, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. And I also <laughs> saw you just went to Arizona with a group of people during the uh, eclipse, right? Yes. So what was the mission behind gathering in a circle formation like that during the eclipse? Eclipses are very 
tricky energy uh, moments. Mm -hmm. um, some people from old traditions, they say, are a, a dark portal, mm. uh, portal for darkness. So uh, they say you shouldn't do anything. For example, here, the native people, they locked themselves so they don't see when that happens. Um, there are many traditions that say that this is a dark moment, so we shouldn't we shouldn't do any energetical thing. Mm. And of course, there are other people like me that say, no, this is the only moment when we could actually see the shadow mm. and the things that we are not facing. Right. So it's like doing therapy, but in a big scale. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so when you see the shadow projected of the of of the moon or the earth on the moon. Um, when you see that, you can actually perceive the subconscious of a lot of information that are around the planet or, and the people, the, the animal kingdom, the vegetal, vegetal kingdom, they all start to act weird, mm -hmm. like because everything gets weird. So all the fears and stuff start to go out. Mm. So basically it's like doing a huge therapy, trying to understand what is in the shade of all this region? Wow. And uh, what should we pay attention to? Yeah. In order to bring light to it. Because yeah. it's easy to be, you know, like a light worker and always be in the, in the, in the light. Mm -hmm. Like that's not work. Right. <laughs> like, like, that's holidays all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when you actually go to the shadows, to the shade, to the dark side of our reality, you can actually see where are the codes that keeps us locked in a trap right. all the time. Um, it's like, like, like I said, like going to therapy and trying to see what is hidden wow. within you. Interesting. So um, we did this gathering and we went to uh, Horseshoe Bend um, mm -hmm. to, to see the eclipse, to be connected to the eclipse and, um, and uh, to to open ourselves to see what was, why everything is happening right now in the world and yeah. so on. Yeah. What did you learn from that? Well, I learned, I, I learned about the trap of eclipses. We have solstice and equinoxes every mm -hmm. year, which is the Holy Cross, the actual Holy Cross mm -hmm. um, is, is the medicine wheel for the native people uh, where you actually combine and cross all the data and information of the light in the planet mm. uh, for the process of life. And then we have another cross every year, which is two solar eclipse and two moon eclipse. Mm. And that means that that's the dark, um, the darkness cross. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what I learned from that is that we are subconsciously controlled by the cross of time during the eclipses. Wow. And uh, we repeat that system once and again, and um, and uh, there's there are ways in which we can use that cross to get out of the system instead of being trapped in the system. Wow. Uh, that's crazy. But that's part <laughs> of the pursuit. Like, okay, what should we do? What can we do? Yeah. So, so yeah. when you say system, does that mean most people are just following a script, like we're in the matrix? What kind of system do you mean? Systems means that we that everything is pattern, like mm. everything that exists is a pattern. Um, and not talking about humanity, talking about atoms. Right. Like uh, we are basically atomic realm organized in a different way. So um, we are basically the mind of the atoms being expressed. Mm. So the atoms organize themselves in patterns, in patterns of frequency, of magnetism. Um, so protons, neutrons, electrons, they, they connect with others, creating molecules and so on in a pattern. Mm -hmm. So a Trinity four or six. Uh, so they follow that pattern and they create the reality through that established pattern that um, was created before. So, um, so a system basically means the code of patterns that creates everything from the very first atom. Mm. So when you, uh, it's basically like the reading of one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, like algebra yeah. uh, that creates the, this, <laughs> for example. Yeah. Um, so this table is also created by a kind of algebra that is not an image, mm -hmm. but is, a, is an idea. 
um, of atoms. Right. So, um, so basically, it says all the tables are based in the same concept yeah. or the same pattern. So, all the people that are living in one culture has the same pattern, mm -hmm. and so on. So, uh, when you read the patterns, you understand the system. Mm. That's basically yeah, what it that means. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. And there's people that can exploit the system, like you said earlier, and those people can levitate, they could do crazy things, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, wow, mm -hmm. that's interesting. But very few people get to that stage. Yeah, uh, and mainly because we have been culturally controlled, uh, sometimes on purpose, mm -hmm. sometimes by mistake, just it happened. Yeah. Uh, but we have been disconnected from our reality, which is atomic reality, quantum reality. Mm -hmm. That is the only reality that actually exists. Right. All the rest is just a perception. So all the perceptions, ideas, um, projections that we have are conditioning our way of relating with the whole, with the everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes us be so limited. Yeah. Um, that's what makes us uh, believe, ah, maybe this is not true yeah. or um I, I i had this this moment of clarity but maybe i'm imagining that you know th this this moments of doubting yourself or doubting uh reality and uh and culture saying oh, you're crazy mm -hmm. or judging the others because they are doing something different uh or because there's they're not doing something established by the common you know um uh, and today with the social media is like amplified. more yeah it's amplified it's like more people are doing whatever they want but more people are being judged yeah so sure. at the same time so more freedom but also more conditionings more scrutiny yeah absolutely it's a double edged sword right yeah so so uh, those things makes us become trapped in our own system so mm. that's why i say i say that uh, it's not always I don't know, a social, not, like a secret society that is trying to control us. Right. Uh, actually, those society, those secret societies are born because they saw how we create those systems. Mm. Like, oh, look how these people is creating a repeated system. Maybe we can use it. Yeah. So it's not the other way around. It's not that there are societies, secret societies that wants to control humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, they exist because we make it very easy. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, yeah. That, that's never thought I mean. of it that way but that makes sense <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there speaking of social media there's a viral movement going on right now that people believe the earth is flat oh yeah now as someone who remembers being an alien in a past life and has experience what's what's been your experience with the space solar system all that mm, that in the universe nothing is flat right <laughs> <laughs> that, that nothing is actually flat uh in the universe everything tends to create a point of gravity or the forces to hold everything together into a core. Mm -hmm. Everything finds the core and you can actually see it everywhere in nature. Mm. You can see it um, everywhere in the universe, in the cosmos. Um, the organization, it doesn't matter the shape, it will always turn back to become a toroid because the basic structure of everything like in atomic in subatomical particles uh is positive and negative mm. so every every reality is created by a positive and negative and when you try to see the invisible aspect of the positive and negative it creates the shape of an apple mm. which is a magnetical field mm -hmm. so it means that everything is brought towards the positive or the negative to a center it doesn't matter where it is so it all creates the shape of a sphere right planets uh like planets like galaxies the galaxies even if they are flat yeah uh they are holded in hold in this shape of magnetical field okay um so there is an ending point then it's not like uh, it's like this all the time it's like this yeah even if it's invis invisible it creates always this shape right so the idea of flat it doesn't even exist in the mineral realm like right. when we see uh, I don't know, a flat surface actually is not flat. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's, it's, um, it has imperfections that tend to go to the rounded shape. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's everywhere like that. Yeah, uh, and I've also seen you speak about the Galactic Confederation. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, in my memories of that, every planet was rounded. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Every yeah. So it was controlled by a space uh, organization. Uh, it's uh, I would describe it like the Galactic Confederation is a conjunction of planets or civilizations that evolved to understand the consciousness of their planets. Mm -hmm. So it's not. Uh, an organization controlling the galaxy, for example, okay. or because we tend to relate it with the UN, maybe, right. uh, or a parliament or something like that. But actually, for this kind of civilizations, it's more about being in the right tune. Mm. So when you when you go into the right um, level of consciousness, you start to understand that every reality, everything that exists, is related to vibration. Mm -hmm. Is one of the main laws of everything. So, if you want to to connect or communicate with another part of the galaxy, you have to find the right tune mm. uh, to do it. So, they are not political uh, civilizations that control other worlds. Mm. They are just communicating by resonance or frequency. Yeah. So that's why they don't actually travel in spaceships to one planet to another, but they actually download themselves by frequency to people living wow. that are in their own resonance. So is that teleportation? Kind of. Yeah. In a quantum level. Yeah, because yeah, people assume spaceships, but it wouldn't make sense because it's so far away. To yeah, get to it's another, too far away yeah. to travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So where did that get lost? Because now we've been trying to communicate with other planets and mm -hmm. haven't had any luck for the past 100 years or so. Yeah. So was it in ancient times where we had that communication? Yes. But the moment when we had that communication was when we understood that the universe was not outside, was within. Mm. So if you see all the civilizations in the past that talked about aliens or that communicated with them, there were civilizations that kind of discovered the technology of the body, mm -hmm. the technology of the technology of the stones. Uh, and they didn't have like spaceships yeah. or... <laughs> or phones or you know uh, they they basically use their own body as 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 tuning forks they use their own bodies as as the way to communicate to um with other realms and so that's why we we lost the communication with other beings from other worlds when we stopped believing in the cosmos within mm -hmm. and we started to create god outside wow and, and what years approximately was that that change that was after the um the the, the end of the last glaciation around eleven thousand years ago eleven thousand wow that's a long time yeah a long time <laughs> so humans have been around for for longer than taught in school then humans have been here for at least three million years though uh, wow three million years because they uh, teach way different as humans right as we know them today um like walking neanderthals and so on yeah uh so since of course the first two million years we were just another species uh becoming clever mm -hmm. the last million years we started to connect with other realities and other realms right um but without civilization mm -hmm. um the past thirty thousand years we started to create civilizations but not specifically related to agriculture mm. um the past twelve thousand years 15,000 years, maybe, we started to create the first civilizations, but not based specifically in agriculture, mm. like we have today. Yeah, It was after the glaciation that we started to um, create settlements, like we know today, mm -hmm. because, uh, because of the cold, um, we, we were able to, the cold going away, we were able to uh, finally um settle right. in other places that before it was impossible yeah so before we were on a level uh, level playing field with other animals but it seems like humans were able to surpass all other animals become the apex predator right mm -hmm. and that was through community and our brains just evolved faster than other exactly. animals yeah and that idea mm -hmm. of evolution mm -hmm. that we come from fish in the water yeah is that true yeah, of course, it, it, of course, it's true. Evolution, of course, as I remember, evolution is 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 a clue of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that, of course, there were many moments of inter 
intervening of yeah. other beings in the middle, like uh, from aliens. other worlds, yeah. bringing some DNA, some data, downloading something. Mm -hmm. So it was not like um, only aliens or only fish. Got it. <laughs> so it was a it was a whole process. Yeah. Wow. So do you have any past lives you remember as other animals or other beings? Yeah, yeah, totally. Wow. I, 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 since I was a child, I, I, I wrote some stories about remembering how to be a plant, a rock, um, wow. a, a bird. Yeah, not much interesting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what was it like being a rock? Compared <laughs> compared to humans, it's like okay. Yeah. No, well, you cannot think. So <laughs> so it's it's very different to explain. It's not like yeah, I was in the desert. No, it's, it's uh, the feeling of of it. Mm -hmm. It's not emotional. It's it's like everything that's like right. That that's the, that's the feeling. Like. Uh, heat cold heat yeah. cold and it's the breathing of the stone and um yeah I've, i felt I, I i remember feeling all that and being the stone but not seeing the stone like i couldn't interesting so you don't have any vision and you don't have a brain to think so you're just feeling yeah feeling a pulse yeah it was feeling a pulse of like magnetism like or, or statics like right going through me and uh and the, the pulse of heat and cold mm -hmm. it was like a breathing interesting it was, it was interesting how to feel it yeah but n now as a human i can understand that it was day and night day and night mm. and and the cold and heat so uh, yeah and how does your soul transfer from that life because rocks are i guess living for many years right yes minerals um when the water or the wind hits the stones the little grains of salt, mm -hmm. the little grains of silica, they fly all over. And for example, from I was, I think if I locate myself, I was I was as a rock in a place called Ahagar. Mm -hmm. Today uh, it's in uh, Argelia, in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. And now, if you can see the dust of the Sahara Desert, for thousands, millions of years, have been uh, have been blown away uh, to the Atlantic Ocean mm. and they all fall into the rainforest in the Amazon. Mm. So all the dust and the, the rocks that are uh, eroded, to they fly to the plants in the Amazon. So eventually they become, they become minerals for the trees. Wow. So you become vegetal. So right. you suddenly become a tree. And maybe that tree is eaten by an animal, mm. and that animal it's eaten by a person, and you oh, suddenly become a human. So that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so at one point we were all rocks then. Yeah. Wow. We all were mineral at the beginning, because we are actually mineral. Like you, you need minerals to survive. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason why, because we we are created by minerals. Mm -hmm. we, our our structure, animal, vegetal, fungi. Uh, we are basically um, from the mineral realm because we need calcium, we need silica, we need phosphorus. Yeah. So if you take a look inside of you, you are all minerals. Right. You are a mountain. Fascinating. So, <laughs> so yeah. is human the final form then, or is there more levels? Oh no, there are more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are more. We're just starting. Oh, so there's a lot more. Oh yeah. Okay. Of course. I thought yeah. so. I found out I've lived 500 lives. Uh -huh. lives so mm -hmm. now i'm wondering what's next and is it alien and then there's more after that well the, for sure there, there's going to be much more yeah. and uh this planet this planet just has discovered what humans is mm -hmm. what humanity are um i mean it's just three million years we have been here right and if you think about the history of the planet it's not that's much. nothing right <laughs> that's nothing we are just uh, we're just a new species trying to discover what can we become. Wow. Yeah, I guess when you zoom out, we're just a speck of dust. Yeah, we're nothing. Yeah, we are, <laughs> we're, we are nothing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we are just discovering it. That's crazy yeah. to think about. So how long has the universe been around then? Well, according to science, I don't know the number, but it's uh, when we talk about the universe, we have to think about the visible one or the invisible one. Mm. Because 
there is a mark of the universe being billions of years because you can see the light from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, you can analyze how long has this light been traveling since the very moment, the first moment. But actually, the universe is not just the visible. Right. So science says the universe was created uh, in a specific moment, but they are they relate that to the uh, infrared waves mm. that we can perceive from the explosion. Mm. But what was before, there was no time because time is only related to the speed of light and the gravity. Mm. So you can actually know when. Right. did actually happen yeah time is just made up right it's relative it's very relative yeah. yeah so you've explored a lot of the past your past the universe's past have you done anything in the future have you explored anything in the future the future the close future or i guess mm -hmm. yeah have you come across any people that have powers that can kind of predict your future do you believe in that stuff oh yeah yeah of course of course because future is just a uh, high vibration mm-hmm so whoever finds the way to pitch themselves into that high speed of the electrons or particles, so you can see the future. Mm. But the future, uh, because it, mo it's, it moves so fast, um, the future can be perceived, can be uh, interpreted, like you can see but you will only see the future that is according to the vibration that you have today. Mm. So means that there are many possibilities. Right. And we can change those possibilities all the time uh, because the particle starts to divide once and again according to the observer. Yeah. So, so you could change your future. All the time. That's good to know because I've, I've been scared to talk to certain psychics and stuff because I, I don't want to mm. know my future. Yeah. Because then you're living with that in the back of your mind. You know what I mean? And you create it. Yeah. And you're going to manifest it. Exactly. exactly. So I'd rather yeah. just live in the present as much yeah. as I can. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can actually change the future. Um, of course, from the point of view, for the, from the point of view of someone that doesn't believe in this is like, yeah, of course you can change the future because it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So, but according to the, quantum reality is you can you can it's not that you can uh that it doesn't exist is that you will change the course of the future according to how you vibrate yeah it's like um it's like you have a river and there's a river going to the sea the outcome will be you will end up in the sea mm. there's no other way you will end up in the sea but maybe then there's a delta and you have many other streams of the river okay so imagine the future yeah being all these different streams and as you go in the main river you will have different options mm -hmm. to get there interesting so the final outcome is determined so you believe we all have a date that we die and that can't be changed no, it, it can be changed according because the river can be shorter or longer. Got it. So, okay. you, 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 but the thing is that the outcome is part of the system. Mm -hmm. So the final thing, the final product, not your death. The death is just another option. Right. But <laughs> um, the final product of why you exist is a, is is encoded in your system. So that's why people can read your future because if they can read your system. If they can understand if you are a triangle or you're a square, mm -hmm. you will know what is going to happen next. If you're a triangle, you will have only three angles. If you are a pentagram, you will have five angles. So, um, so that's that's what it means. Someone can read your future mm. because they can read your structure. Right. Have you heard of any super spiritual people being able to extend their lifetime? Because I had a Taoist master on here. He said he's met some people that have lived to 150 years old. Yeah. So have you witnessed any of that? I haven't I haven't witnessed, but I know it's possible. Mm. And I know for certain and that it's totally possible. Uh, but it's all related on how you eat, how you breathe, and how you proceed in life. Right. It's uh, because basically what what makes you die faster is if you breathe faster. Mm. because it's, it's actually the cells start to die because of oxygen wow so you're so, saying not to do cardio 
<laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> that's Maybe because they, I'm lazy. That's, that's what they teach you to be healthier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, to be healthier. Yeah, of course. Not to be longer. Not right. to live longer. Uh, to live health. So that's the chop of the system. Like, like, okay, you want to be healthier. You have to, but also you have to practice the correct, the right breathing. Yeah. Because if you, if you usually we breathe like if we try to, to survive, like mm -hmm. like this, we all do that. Yeah. Um, but people that live longer usually is because they acquire this ability of breathe very slow and mm. uh, breathe out very slow. Right. And sometimes they don't even feel that they are breathing because <laughs> they are holding the air for so long and they come back. So, um, so that helps the body to not to waste energy every time that the, the cells uh, absorb energy. Wow. Because the, the, the energy is absorbed by oxygen yeah. um, uh, in the cells. So it creates that reaction of strength and uh, forces. So as faster you, you breathe, mm -hmm. um, the fastest you burn your cells. Wow. Never so knew that. I got to keep an eye on that because I breathe pretty <laughs> fast, man. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, that's why meditation yeah. uh, uh, or living in, in the high mountains where you have to walk slowly and mm. everything, you know, like in Tibet or yeah. in Peru, Bolivia, these people tend to kind of live longer maybe yep. because they they live like a like a turtle yeah they call it blue zones <laughs> there's five of them and i think all of them are in mountainous regions actually so that makes a lot of sense i actually mm -hmm. just went to bolivia have you been there yes yeah i course. liked it there a lot yeah felt very good there there's certain yeah. places you travel to and you just something about it you feel really good yeah yeah, yeah i don't know how to explain it yeah um have you done a uh, ayahuasca recently uh not recently okay no you're taking a break from psychedelics for now no 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 uh actually i'm uh this year for me has been a try um uh, it was the first time that i tried um mushrooms okay also how was that um great <laughs> nice. yes yes I, it feels well for me it feels like home yeah it's like yes <laughs> and uh, i and it's it's amazing because I uh, it enables me to to connect and go deeper into the system mm. and uh, many many crazy things happen. <laughs> I yeah, love so. mushrooms. I, I microdose them. Mm. Yeah, but you did a full trip, like yes, yes, nice. of course, yeah. Were you alone or with people? I was with a friend. Okay. Um, yeah, and I wanted to access the information of of uh, something that I needed to understand, so mm. I created. A portal at home with with 32 books uh, wow. uh like tao quran uh torah the bible uh, the food of gods the the, uh, the kibalion so many different books um the book of dead uh the egyptian book of dead the, the tibetan book of dead so i put like 32 of those books uh and uh, i don't like to read mm -hmm. So I access to the information through the mushrooms. Wow. <laughs> so I, That's so I cool. opened the portal and I was reading them like like that. So you didn't even have to open the book, you were just reading. No, them. I haven't. And and <laughs> and uh and I was explaining to my friend in front everything that how they all connected and uh the they shaped the idea of something that we all have to do eventually um in a project. But I understood that from entering the the magnetical field of the books yeah. wow so there's a connection between every religion you're saying e everything is exactly related like they all have the same uh the same pattern what's the pattern uh the the patterns are codes that are um hidden through time and space through all the different messengers that came in different times mm. different timelines yeah that connected with that specific uh, realm in the fifth dimension to download inf the information. Mm -hmm. So there are many stories that makes no sense, but in the middle of of that, there is there are many codes to 
to understand the way where we should move mm -hmm. and it's got and it goes beyond god beyond yeah wow. it's um fascinating yeah there are many things that yeah so you don't tie yourself to one religion you're very open to different perspectives yeah they are all perspectives of the universe so right it's like i don't know it's it's like saying um like choosing between one star or the other mm -hmm. i don't know it's like they they all have different shine shining they all have different information yeah and you cannot see the universe without all of them and it seems like these days religion is very divisive um like they kind of put each other against each other you know oh yeah it's 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 been always like that since religion was not related to faith but politics right yeah when did that start happening uh i i think 500,000 years ago oh so a lot okay <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was recent but. oh no 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 okay. this 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 has been always related to the alpha male um humans we are mammals so mm -hmm. we move in herds and uh because we move in herds we always need the wise one that is uh in the herd and also we need the leader to tell us where to go mm -hmm. how to hunt how to survive so we rely the survival of the herd to someone that knows where he's going and usually in uh, in our biological history usually a male took care of that right. when we were m traveling and a, a, a woman took care of that when we were settling mm. so um so in that system that we created we always created a pyramidal society in which we rely the power on someone mm -hmm. so when that someone was the one connecting to the truth uh we kind of trust completely right what that person was saying yeah and eventually um some of those leaders created a system for all of the people to connect with the same information mm -hmm. and some other leaders creating a system of all the others working for him because he knew the system wow so in these two ways uh one uh what happened when the whole society and population knows the truth they cannot form a civilization hmm. because in order to have a civilization that thrives mm -hmm. you need people that follows people right because you need structures you need you need people that will uh play an order like okay if you tell me do this i will do it mm -hmm. so uh in a in a structured society you need defense for example uh in the past i'm talking about the first beginning of humanity right, right. so if someone comes to attack you must attack to defend yourself for yeah. example um so if everyone attacks in a different way you may be lose yeah the war so you need someone to tell you how to do it when to do it mm -hmm. how to follow orders so because of that the people that follow orders should not be connected to themselves because otherwise they don't follow orders mm. they are just awakened beings that go to the tree right and talk to god <laughs> <laughs> so that's why in order to create an empire or a kingdom they needed to control the ability of people to connect themselves with god wow so yeah back then there was a lot of wars too right oh yeah that it was good. it was terrible because it was about survival yeah uh, everything could us. everyone could us. Mm -hmm. so it was all about survival and uh, so because of that we created the idea of religion and cultures as a way to make us survive not as a way to connect us mm. as a way to say okay if we are christian and i am christian we can get together and we understand each other right so we can make a force against the other one that is in front of us that we don't know so so religion stopped being a way to connect it, it became a way of defense to survive to survive wow and that's, that's why that's why people fight for religion yeah. because they want to survive even still to this day defend the territory 
defend an idea, yeah. a position, a political. Uh, but if they look deeper into it, like you said, they're all connected with the same goal. They are the same. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, is it true telling the truth is high vibration that, that releases some high vibration energy? Truth? Um, yeah, it's a high vibration. That's why it's impossible to know it mm. because it's like the future. Truth um, is always changing. It's not real. Really? Yeah. You can't tell the truth. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is it always changing? Uh, it's always changing because uh, truth is a, per is a perception. Okay. Uh, like, for, like, there is always something new to discover. Like, for example, science would say, no, there is a truth. There is a, uh, you, you can prove this and prove that and so on. Yeah. Until they discover quantum physics. When they discover quantum physics, it's like, I, I cannot get it. You got to write and off I was like, okay, what? Well, what does it mean? You know, like right. uh, so. There is a moment in the inner core of reality that nothing that you even thought it was true is actually true. Like, oh not gosh. even <laughs> physics is true. You know. So, what is the truth? Yeah. Well, truth is a perception that always changes according to the consciousness. Wow. So it's the same thing with lying, then too. Yeah. There's no lies. So there's no lies. There's only different perceptions of the truth. Mm. Uh, there's no truth. There's always different perceptions of something. Yeah. So that's why I usually say what I'm saying right now is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a slice of the truth that I experience and that it becomes true as a lot of people share the same truth. Mm. So, uh, for example, in, in, this, in this sense, we can say, okay, so... If a lot of people say that there is a God, is there a God? Yes, in the fifth dimension there is because mm -hmm. you created it. Um, if, the flat, if the earth is flat, if the earth is not flat, but a lot of people believe that it's flat, is the earth flat? Well, in a slice portion of truth, which is three kilometers, yes, it's flat. So, so wow. everything has a slice of truth. So you're saying if there's enough people that believe in it, they can make it true. They can make it true, but also it means that there is a part of it that is true. Wow. And some, but, but because we are so, um, we, we want for our truth to become the whole truth. Mm -hmm. We tend to say, I saw that this is true, so this must be the truth for everybody. And that's the conflict that we have. Yeah. Because we collide with each other truth when actually each other truth com complements the other truth mm. it completes the other truth yeah each so, person has a different truth right exactly so if we if we are compassionate to the truth of others mm -hmm. what we can start doing is to shape the idea of everything yeah but if we lose more time trying to argue with the other one is lying and i'm saying the truth so we are losing energy into discovering the actual truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, it's very complex. So I know humans. Truth thing. <laughs> yeah. So I know humans are made up of energy, right? Mm -hmm. Is everyone born with positive energy at first? Positive? Yeah. Like meaning good? Good, yeah. Um, no. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Like, I think uh, because actually, when in terms of energy when you talk about positive if something is completely positive it becomes toxic mm. this is a, a natural law really like um uh, it, it becomes toxic and and it can become a disease wow if, if you are completely negative it also can happen that yeah so the extremes are not good so you need both you're saying you need both otherwise you're not created Whoa. you cannot create anything if you have if you don't have both things and because we are not being born at, at first. We are just energy. So we are a consequence. Mm -hmm. uh, someone that is born is not a new person. Someone that is born is the consequence of many people. Mm. So you are entangled constantly into positive and negative. And you have the information of all the positive and negative things that happened before you mm -hmm. in your DNA in your energy, in your culture, everything. Yeah. So you are the result of that. Wow. But being born completely pure 
It's very complicated. It's actually something interesting. Weird. So there's no one that has just pure energy. There's always a balance. Yes. Wow, because you look at guys like Mr. Beast that are so giving to charities and you just assume it's all positive. But I guess they have a negative side too. They need to, but the negative is not bad. The, the, sometimes the negative, for example, um, I don't know, like uh, let's say a person that is that was very positive and made everyone happy and um, um, Robin Williams. Mm, yeah. He's f***ing himself. Right. Why? Because he was giving so much happiness to everybody and he was such a good person that suddenly he compensated with depression. Mm. Yeah, and that one was you know, crazy. So um, that's why we need a balance because it's not that you, are a, you have to be a bad person or a good person. Yeah. It's that a lot of positivity can be also toxic because it creates the same amount of energy in the opposite side. Toxic positivity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, yes, yeah, so you really need that balance because uh, I grew up in a pretty negative environment. Mm -hmm. So I, now I'm trying to offset it, but it's an interesting battle I've had. Uh, sometimes the negative, uh, the negative and the positive are tools, yeah. not a way of living. Right. That, that I would say that. Like, um, like, in order for your body to move forward, you need positive and negative all the time. Mm. So if you don't have positive and negative discharges, your muscles cannot move, for example. So, so think about that in your life. Yeah. Like, if you don't have a negative thing happening to you, you don't move forward. That's true, because in business especially, you need, to, you need to fail to move forward. Yeah, so in, uh, in everything, you need a crisis to know how to move forward. Right. Uh, and, and that's... That's the law of the universe, polarity. Yeah. So you cannot create something new unless you have both polarities. So, but they need to be in balance. Mm -hmm. We culturally, we tend to say, I am very negative or very positive. Yeah. And that creates chaos in our life because we are giving more power to one side. Mm -hmm. But actually, when, we, when you find the harmony into both of them, everything bad or negative that happened in your life it becomes a tool for your positive in your life. And we are usually tend to say, I want to forget this has happened, or I want to throw this away, or I don't want to remind this, or I just, I'm trying to transcend this reality and I don't want for that happened anymore. But it's always about escaping the negative and not mm -hmm. taking the tools from it. Yeah, people always try to run away from their traumas yeah. or their bad moments mm -hmm. or memories, but you're saying to embrace it, face it head on. Yeah, because they are the tools. It's like, if you, if you have a hammer and you want to put a nail in the wall and you, you crash your finger with the, with the hammer, mm -hmm. would you throw the hammer away and never watch it again? No. No, you, you just need to know how to use it. Yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah, I've done that before, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. so mad at that hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you throw it away, then you cannot put nail. Yeah. <laughs> so I've actually never seen you talk about money. Money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's your relationship with money? Do you even care about it at all? I care about it because otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> 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 I, I wouldn't be able to travel. Yeah. Um, I, yes, of course, the uh, money is, is another way of energy, of mm -hmm. exchange of energy. We are talking, that's an exchange of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are paying something, we are, is an exchange of energy. And the exchange of energy is how much energy it takes for you to go somewhere, do something, change something, build something. Mm -hmm. So it's about the energy that you need in order to carry that. We demonize the money because money in, the, in our last part of the civilization for the last uh, 2,000 years, uh, 3,000 years, mm. has been a way to control others. Mm to control the ability of others to be free. Yeah. So, um, so we created all this idea that money is evil, that money is a problem, that money, but, but uh, make this exercise, take away all the money in the world and what would happen? So we will start to fight. It'd be chaos, right? By stones. Yeah. We will start to fight because of snails. We will, we will start to fight <laughs> because we want corn. Yeah. So, Change it by corn. 
you will fight for corn. You will be sad if you don't have the corn. Mm -hmm. So it's not about money. It's about how we establish our relationship with giving and receiving in our lives. Right. So today is money, and it could tomorrow could be shells. Uh, I don't know. It used to be shells in the past. Right. Gold. Uh, gold. But for other cultures, for example, for America, gold was nothing. Mm. Gold was like paper for us today. Yeah. Like everyone used coal, gold, but Europe needed gold. So they came here and said, oh, they have gold. And I said, oh, you want it? Yeah. Like, yeah. we didn't use it for anything here in Europe, in, in America. So, right. so this, this concept of what is money, what is value, um, is actually time and survival. Like, how much time do I need to do something? How much energy do I need to do something? Mm. Uh, how much food do I need to keep doing this? Yeah. How much safety I need in order to do this? So wealth, money, it's a way to actually uh, allow you to do stuff. Mm. Like for example, I, uh, if I would have to work in other things in order to pay my food for, to do this for free, I wouldn't be doing this because I need to work eight hours a day. Right. Then I would I would be tired and so on. So uh, I cannot dedicate my life to my mission. Yeah. If other people don't give me, uh, don't give me money for me to keep going. Yeah. So because today th that's how it works. Uh, before it was food, so mm -hmm. people would give me food or like I I. I, I have traveled the world without money wow. for a long time, just being at home with people, they give me food and everything. So I've been traveling like that. Mm -hmm. But suddenly I needed, I needed to, to reach more and people started to offer me more. Mm. It was not me asking more, they started to offer me more. Wow. Because they knew that I needed to do stuff that in the other way I wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So my relationship with money is Money is not the important thing. Mm -hmm. Is what is the purpose you need the money for? Right. What uh, is the mission behind it? What is the mission behind yeah. it? What, what is the need of, of that resource? But because sometimes it's not about having money to do stuff. Mm -hmm. It's about being open to receive the wealth in different ways. Yep. And um, most of the things that I did in my life weren't because of money. Yeah. Were because the people that had the money helped me to do it. Interesting. I, I didn't need the money. Yeah, so, there's people that they win the lottery, they lose all their money. There's people that make yeah. money unethically and they end up losing it yeah. because money is energy, right? Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying if you make it in the wrong way, you're going to lose it. Yeah, uh, you're going to lose it or you're going to have a lot of problems. Yeah. Um, so um, so there, there, are, there are a lot of unethical pe people that have made a lot of money and they created and they they have an empire of money mm. and so why are they doing good in life with money if they are unethical mm -hmm. well because because money and ethics is not related money is energy if you know how to handle energy you will have the money yeah so uh and most of the most of the people that are spiritual are not properly handling money because we don't care about money. I noticed that a lot of spiritual people don't care. And because, because they don't care, then they are complaining about people that has the money. Hmm. And, uh, and they are not able to do their good, their, their things for humanity because they have to work all the time to pay their taxes or their food. Yeah. So they are losing energy in a war, in a war that they shouldn't be <laughs> fighting. Yeah, it doesn't even matter, right? Exactly. Think about yes. It. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's not about having or not having money. It's about what is the purpose I'm giving to the money. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mateus, yeah. I've learned a lot, man. It's been fun again. Anything you want to <laughs> close off with or promote? I don't know. <laughs> Any courses, events you got coming up? Um, no, I, I just I just would like to say what I told you before to you that uh, next year, 2024, for me, it's going to be very important to make a new reconnection of the network. Mm -hmm. So 
I probably will open in gatherings in, in Egypt for that, in every solstice and equinox. Nice. So I would just say to for everybody to pay attention to that in case you want to go or in case you want to connect online yeah. uh, to be in the same frequency. Absolutely. I'll definitely yeah. be there. Thanks so much for coming on again. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. And I'll see you next time.